when I'm waiting for the message. There we go. OK, we are recording now. Dismiss. Tell you one thing, if you're going to be a librarian, you have to be willing to be recorded. Share. Well, I'm going to share my screen with a PowerPoint. We are going to do a PowerPoint and then we'll do practice if we have time. Okay. Here we go. This is my contact information. If you would like to get in contact with me, if you have further questions, if there was something that was confusing, if you want me, if you're an instructor and you would like me to talk about this to your class or talk to your class about library resources, I'd be glad to do that. Or just call me and say, are you sure this is Chicago? And we'll pull out the big monster book. And we'll figure it out. Okay. Chicago style. This is from the University of Chicago. Um, it's formatting for citations used in the humanities, history, literature, and the arts. I know I think of MLA for a lot of literature, but I do remember using Chicago for my history degree when I earned my bachelor's degree. The second slide there also, this makes reminds me, um, the PowerPoint and a one shot one page summary of this style will be in your um, chat boxes and chat areas so that you can refer to these if you would like or follow these links. So the University of Chicago has an online website that provides different sources. Um, I got a lot of this information from and the handout from Purdue University's OWL, the online writing lab. They are a wonderful way to go to help refresh your memory. So this is the link to their sections. It covers both different styles. It talks about headings and paper formatting, covers a lot of different things that I cannot cover in our time together now. So there are two resources for you to go to. Chicago regulates your stylistics and your document format, your margins, your spacing. And also, you know, word usage or, you know, not so we're like, not like, you know, it will, it will tell me what to do, but your verbs and your grammar and, and gives you suggestions and things like that. How you format your tables, etc. And then it also looks at your in-text citations, how you cite things in your paragraphs in your paper, and also your end of text citations. These are this is your reference list or your works cited list. The basic rule that I have for, for any formatting style, whether it's MLA, whether it's APLA, is always follow your instructor's guidelines. The easy answer for this is they're grading the paper. But your instructors may have particular formats that they want you to use. I'm also thinking about for your master's thesis, if there are any graduate students in the in the audience, that you have to use particular styles for your master's thesis. And sometimes you mix them a little bit. If there's a conflict, go to this style. And that may not be the latest, it may be a different one. So always follow your instructor's guidelines and then you can use these sources. General formatting guides. This is your formatting for your paper. White standard size paper, eight and a half by 11. Using one to one half inch margins on all sides. That's helpful because I've used some margins where the first page is an inch and a half on the left and then everything else is there. Um, so one to one half inch margins. Use a readable typeface. So I'm thinking, Times New Roman, Calibri, no sans font, no gothic, something that that's very readable. Um, preferably 12. I've had it where I've gone to 10 because I really like the topic and I still needed to squeeze it into the pages. So between 10 and 12. You double space all text. And then here's what throws me off one space after the punctuation between sentences. 
period one space. When I would learn typing last century, it was two spaces. So period one. Numbering pages begins with the Arabic numeral one on the first page of the text. So if you have title pages or different things like that, those are not numbered one. The first thing where you start writing and introducing your topic. So here's the formatting of your title page. Title is centered one third way down and you can scream it so you can write it in all caps. Remember, no page numbers on this title page. Your name, course, and date will follow several lines below and we're also centered. Text. Body text should be double spaced with no break between paragraphs or sections. So set your document for double spacing. You get to the end of a paragraph. You hit return and start your next paragraph. So that's what I think when they mean break. Do I hit return twice? You're double spacing already. Paragraph, period, return, new start your tab, start your new paragraph. And then your footnotes and endnotes are single spaced along with your citations. APA, it's double spaced. MLA is double spaced, right, Mohammed? Yes. Yeah, but we're single spaced here. Um, what I would call a blocked quotation, what they call a, a, a prose quotation is five or more lines. So if you want to, I'm thinking of the great paragraph from Pride and Prejudice when Lady Catherine de Berg quotes, um, confronts Elizabeth Bennet, and there's one paragraph that just flows beautifully, sentence after sentence, building to the climactic sentence of, are the shades of Pemberley to be thus polluted? And it just shows how you do that great paragraph flow when you're writing. And so if I wanted five or more lines and that paragraph is five or more lines, I would block it. It would be single spaced, no quotation marks, and you, but you do leave that extra space before and after and you indent the quotation. So I'm looking at this paper. I know this is a block quotation. How do I know? Because it's single spaced when the rest of the document is double spaced and it's indented a little bit. As you read, you use the paper and your writers and the format will give you clues to help you understand as you go along. Formatting a reference or in um, notes and bibliography, it's a works cited page. This example gives the good general format. They make one error. The title is references for a arts um, author date style. References, top of the page. Don't fold it, don't italicize it, don't enclose it in quotation marks. References. Your first entry and the first line of every entry is flush left. Subsequent lines are indented. So this is also known as a hanging indent. I guess that this is hanging or that's hanging. I'm not sure. It's control T. Muhammad okay. told me that you do that. If you have the um, little arrows and the ruler, it's the there's two little arrows and then there's little bottom one. If you move that one, it will automatically indent for you. Also, the idea of doing the hanging indent. Following the reader example, if I see something at the left, then I as the reader know I'm going to a new citation. I'm done with Homo Sayer. Now I have a new title. Now I have a new title. Um, order um, entries are alphabetically by author's last name. Easy. Single space entries, double space entries externally. So your, your return and you have the extra space in between as you single space. 
OK, so here is our citation. Authors are required to identify source material for direct quotations, paraphrases, and any facts or opinions not generally known or easily checked. Again, author date style notes bibliography style. If you're familiar with APA and MLA, you're going to know our author date. Sentence, quote, paraphrase, you'll see the author in parentheses. If you're used to reading and then you get a little number at the end, at super, sub, superscript, right? It's kind of sub would be down. Yes, yes. So, superscript, little, little number, and then a then a little little thing one and the document reference at the bottom. That's your a notes bibliography style. A lot very confusing sometimes if we're trying to do both. Could be a lot of slides. So. Two weeks, notes, bibliography, you know where to go. Author date, parenthetical citations to identify sources. Includes each source cited within the text as an entry of the bibliography at the end of the paper. So every time you cite something, you put it at the end of the paper. This is a little different from APA. APA, sometimes like if you refer to it, you know, if you're using that document and your research, but don't quite cite it, APA still wants you to, to use it, include it, or at least I did when I did mine in APA. This one is flat out, you cite it, you put it in the, you put it in the bib. So your parenthetical citations, Consist of the author's last name and the publication date, and if necessary, the page number of the source. So you see in this example from OWL, the first part just had, has a particular page number, and then the second one just has the year. So sometimes my, my students struggle with this. When do I do the pages? When do I not? Well, you don't do the pages when you are talking about generally works. Um, and you're even when you're paraphrasing, if you're talking about a specific section, you probably should you should um, put the page number. But if let's say I'm talking about in general the Elizabeth Zimmerman work Knitting Without Tears and its impact. I would put Zimmerman and Knitting Without Tears and then the date in parentheses. If I want to quote the section where she tells you, you know when to stop um, knitting the neck of a turtleneck when you lose your mind, it's then I would put Zimmerman the date of the publication on which I believe is 1969 and then the particular page where she says, when you lose your mind. So if you're talking about a particular part, you put the page. They also have you do section, you can do chapter, different things like that. But if you're talking about a work as a whole, it's just the date. No punctuation between the author's last name and the year. APA, you do that. <clears throat> yes, I think you do. Place the comma between the year and the page number. So for if anyone has attended Muhammad's MLA class with my favorite line, no P, no comma, no P. You do use a comma, but you don't use the P. Um, place author date citations before a mark of punctuation whenever possible. So don't go period and then put the citation put it before the period. That allows the reader to know that this citation is connected to this sentence. It's easier to tell when you're quoting, but not so much when you're um, paraphrasing. And what if you are talking about two different authors in the same paragraph? What if I am con contrasting Elizabeth Zimmerman's use of humor in knitting, writing about knitting with Stephanie Pearl McPhee's use of humor in writing about knitting. Then I need to 
be able to end it. So I would do like each sentence or mention the name in the sentence to give my reader an idea of who I was talking about and allowing them to follow the sources and read it for themselves or discover it for themselves. Okay. Author's name, whenever it appears in the text, the work cited, the date should follow. So it should always be anytime Zimmerman's appears in the text and I'm doing 1969's Knitting Without Tears, it should be Zimmerman 1969. Not just the first time, every time. If I have to mention that 50 times in a paper, so be it. And then here's the rule, even it, art, when articulated in the possessive. So I could be saying Zimmerman's and then parentheses 1969 text explores blah, blah, blah. If you have a source with no identifiable author, sometimes this comes up with web pages cited by its title both on the bibliography page and in a shortened form up to four words in parenthetical citations throughout the text. So let me go back to, let me choose another knitting book, Knitter's Almanac. Let's say we didn't know who, knit, who wrote Knitter's Almanac. So I could do Knitter's Almanac. I would, I would leave the author field blank and I would adjust and do Knitter's Almanac. And then in the parenthetic, parenthetical citations, it would be Knitter's Almanac because that's a short enough title. If I had, let me see, um, if I had a longer titled book, for example, Catherine Hepburn wrote a book, became a bestseller, The Making of the African Queen or How I Went to Africa with Brogard Bacall in Houston and Almost Lost My Mind. I wouldn't write that every single time. Though in my bibliography page at the very end, absolutely. But I may do making of, making of African queen. If I don't have anything else that's making of, I would probably do making of. And again, like I mentioned before, if you need to do a section or a volume or a note, then you can um, indicate those options where note 12 or volume six is particularly discusses this particular issue. So you have the same source, but different pages referenced in the same paragraph include a full citation on the first reference and then provide page numbers thereafter. So let's see. So we're all talking about da, 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 there. So we have Harvey. There's my full citation. But here's the same sentence. And I can just put the page number there because I know it's in the same sentence and it's tied there. Okay. When you have several sources written by the same author in the same year, list them alphabetically by title in your reference list and then add the letters A, B, and C to the year of publication. Retain those letters in text. So you see here, this, we're, we're citing a lot of this work. 1984 was a very good year for this author, but how do I know which one? I look for D, I look for A in my list at the end of the work, and that will tell me which one that you cited. When the same page of the source is cited more than once in a single paragraph, you need only to cite the source in full after the last reference or at the end of the paragraph. So let's say I'm going back to my paragraph about the Shades of Pemberley from Pride and Prejudice, and I break it down in my own words 
or with my own idea, how I want to show how it builds the climax to that final sentence. And then she ends the paragraph. And I was using the same source you could do kind of like in the example here at the end of the paragraph. And it's after the period. So I know it's at the end of a period. It's the only citation in there. All of this above belongs to this source. And it's a similar concept here for block quotations. Citations for block quotations begin after the final punctuation of the quotation. Boom. No period is required either before or after the opening or closing parentheses. Again, so I know everything is here. And I also want to mention that I don't, you all probably know this, but I'm going to do it again. And when you do a block quote, you have to introduce it every time. So here in our example, we have Rose eloquently and we have Rose 1999. So the author has introduced it. So I know this big block is from Rose. 1999 and it's on this page. So I can go look at that. A semicolon is used to separate two or more references in a single parenthetical citation. You may see this in lit reviews. When you mention, you know, many of lot many research articles will look longitudinally parentheses, boom, semicolon, citation, semicolon. You can also use it to do a short but relevant short comment, like our example below. So there's our author, and then political issues are addressed here. Be very brief. Provides an excellent summary. Or provides a good example or, or addressed in chapter five. Don't put this provides a good summary, but don't listen it into an audio because you really miss the maps and the dates go back and forth and it can be confusing. No. <laughs> now let's go to the end of text citations. That's the bibliography. That's the reference list. Um, if anyone has seen these before, these are the basic steps. I talk about this in MLA. I'll talk about this in a uh, notes bibliography. I believe Mohammed mentions it, or uh, a, he mentions it in MLA. I mention it in APA. Um, basic steps, whatever you're doing. First, identify the source type. Is it a book? Is it a journal article? Is it an online article? Is it an online book? And sometimes that can be tricky. Find the appropriate citation in your citation book or website. They will give you sample entries and examples. Mirror the sample entry on your bibliography page, replacing the sample information with the new entries information. That's exactly what I did when I was preparing for this class and preparing for our examples. This is the basic structure of a reference, whether it is a book, a journal article, a website, your author, your publication date, your title, and your publication information. You invert your author's first, the first author's last name and first name. Zimmerman, comma, Elizabeth. And then the other authors are first and then last name. So Elizabeth, comma, Zimmerman, Zimmerman, comma, Elizabeth. And Stephanie Pearl McPhee. You use the conjunction and you don't use the ambersand unlike um, APA. 
for two or three authors, you write all of them out in the in, in as they appear on the title page of the source in your notes and bibliography. For four to ten, you write out all the names in the bibliography, but just use your first author and et al in your notes and your um, parentheses. Write out Zimmerman, Pearl McPhee. Isham, Mason Dixon knitting, or should be modern knitting daily. And then it would be Zimmerman et al. To save you a little typing. Headline style capitalization for titles. Unlike the APA rules. Italicize titles of longer works. Such as books and journals. Quotation marks around the titles of shorter works, such as journal articles or essays or chapters in books. Our example here is A Tale of Two Cities because that is a novel versus an article, an essay on Dixon, Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. And here you have both the parentheses the quotations and the italics. Your article title is in quotation marks. Your journal is italicized. I have my students when I taught a class, I had them read the fine art of baloney detection. So that's in quotation marks because it's a chapter in a larger book, Science's Candle in the Dark. That would be in italics. Publishers names are written out in full, but may be abbreviated. And I would go by what the publisher does. They may go, they may use the abbreviation. A lot of organizations now are so known by the abbreviations, they just go with the abbreviations. Electronic identifiers for journal, we're looking for a DOI over a URL especially when you are doing electronic items. The DOI helps us locate it faster. DOIs are to be prefaced with the letter DOI and a colon. Now, DOIs are assigned to journals and books in any medium, even if they're paper but you only need to include the DOI if you access the electronic version. If you're looking through a database, if you're looking on the web page, you need to include the DOI. If you have the book in your hot little hand, you don't. If you must use a URL, look for a stable version assigned by the journal. Permalink stable URL. The idea is that your reader or another researcher can get to it quickly. And temporary URLs make that very difficult. No access date is required to be pro, um, reported for electronic resources. So if you don't have a date of publication, if you think this source may be unstable, which you want to be careful of using anyway, then you can do the, you, you could include the access date. Um, if you cannot ascertain the publication date, it's ND. This is the basic structure of a book reference. I should ask for any questions. Should we all just take a deep breath and a breather? Anyone notice that I put those rules in the order of a reference structure? Basic structure of a book reference. Now we're taking that basic, basic reference structure and we're expanding it. Author or name of institution, because an institution can produce an item, I want to give them credit. Date of publication, title of book, including any subtitle. So it's not just the making of the African Queen. It's the making of the African Queen or how I went to Africa with Bogart Bacall in Houston and almost lost my mind. Editor, compiler or translator, if any. 
If you have a foreign a book, a um, fiction work that is translated, the translator does a very important job and deserves, and it is a fine art and a practice, and people study to be translators. There's translation studies, a whole field studying how people translate. Um, they need credit. Sometimes you'll see editor mentioned when you're looking at your Penguin Classic. Like if I'm looking at a Penguin Classic of Pride and Prejudice, they will include the editor compiler because it is the editor looks at the book very carefully. They help with notes to give readers direction. They write that fancy, almost sc very scholarly introduction to the beginning. Sometimes they'll have you know, concluding um, things at the end of a novel. They do a lot of work for that um, individual novel or piece of thing, so they get credit for it. Sometimes for all the English majors, if you remember, you'll get the citation and you to make sure everyone is looking at the right Pride and Prejudice or, or reading the text, the same, you know, the same text. They may say this version edited here or this edited by this person. A lot of nonfiction works that are compilations will have an editor and they assume the major authority and stuff so they could be listed first. Edition if not the first, volume if applicable, series title if applicable. Facts of publication, city and publisher. You don't have to worry about state anymore. And then how do you do you abbreviate the state and then your electronic retrieval information? So here are my examples. So you see how we have that first author. So Philip and Lisa edited. They're listed as the author in this, so they're first. Literatures of exile in the English Revo Revolution and its aftermath. I should probably cap them. Busted myself. A should be capitalized. There's the dates. My series is Transculturalism 1400 to 1700. Burlington, don't have to worry about if it's Vermont, Ashgate, there's my DOI. And this one I did access online. Here, I did not access it online. It's the physical copy. Phillips, Seymour Phillips publication date. My title is in italics. Yale English Monarchs. That's the series. Really good series, by the way. Um, New Haven, Yale University Press. Basic structure of a journal article. Prince. My author or authors. And if some of you in academia may know, that list can get hairy and long. Date of publication title and subtitle of the article or column, title of periodical, issue information, that's your volume, your issue, and sometimes if you have the month or a date, you can put that there too, the pages, and then the electronic retrieval information, the DOI URL, or name of database. And usually you would use the name of the database if it's very unique information that would only be available in that database. And it gives the person a little help where to find it. I'm thinking of the systematic reviews. That it's a database of systematic reviews. I can't remember the first name right now. All my medicine people are screaming it at their screens. Um, systematic review, Cochrane, there we go. Cochrane Systematic Reviews. They don't put them in any other database. It's their product, it's what they're known for. It's in their own database. So you could put in there, in your database, Cochrane um, Systematic Reviews. Okay, here's my two articles. I chose this one, the first one, because of all the quotation marks and the italics and stuff. 
So a dog, a rat, and a cat to scratch a man to death. Oliver, Olivier's, Richard III, and popular cultures. Now, of course, a dog, a cat, and a rat to scratch a man to death is a particular quote of a version of a particular poem that was written about at, um, Richard III um, during his reign. So you double quotation. And then Richard III there particularly is a, a play in popular cultures. There's my journal, there's my number, there's my volume, there's my pages. And look, the, and, and JSTOR has the stable URL for me. What sweeties? Oh. This one here is a little, is e cleaner, author, date, no parentheses like I'm used to in APA, Richard III and the Reformation. So this isn't in quotations because it is, it's Richard III. It's the dude. There's my journal, my volume, no issue, but there's a month. So I could put the month when I'm trying to find it. Which one of the 80 volumes, you know, 83, which could have multiple issues? It's the October. It's page 500. So I can use this and find the article quickly. Find Journal of Ger English and Germanic Philology. Find the 1884. Find October. Go to page 509. And I'm all set. Basic structure of a web page or website reference. Tricky two. Author, title of the specific web page, name of website, publishing organization. That middle part here is very interesting. Now you can do an access date. This is where it wants to. Publication or revision date or access date. And then the URL. So here's my example. There's no author for this. This is a table and an interactive from the census. Someone probably created this, but there's no author listed. So I don't have an author. I go to the title and it's an individual website. It's a page. It's a specific page. So I go US marriage and divorce rates by state. It's a chart comparing nine and 19. The website is census.gov. I still don't italicize it. The publishing organization is the US Census Bureau. Now I got lucky. At the bottom, it said revised and gave me a date so I could put the revision date. A lot of government organizations and websites do this, which is very helpful to know how recent a website is. Is it maintained? Could there be newer information out there? And then the URL. As a spot. OK. I'm going to end the PowerPoint presentation with my usual advice. I give this to my students when I taught classes. I give the students when I ask reference questions. It is something I believe in strongly. The best and most accurate citation team is your brain and the citation guide. The website citing buttons can and will occasionally fail you. And you will lose the points on your paper. Your name is on the paper. Not citation machine, your name. So get to know your citation guide in the basics. Remember those basic formats. They will be able to get you through citing almost everything. And because you know your books, chapters 14 and 15, just on the citation styles in this monster, you will be able to cite everything correctly and accurately. 
And with the more practice, you'll be, be able to pull it out of the original computer, your brain, as you're sitting down, even after your fifth thing of coffee, even after writing for five hours. Once you know this, you'll be able to do it just fine on your own. So take a little time. Like I said, I haven't read this whole thing. I've looked at chapters 14 and 15 so that I know the basics of citing. And then if I get something that's a little squirrely or I'm not real sure, I know exactly where to go to. Okay, now I have on my watch 1245, 1246. Um, Mohammed, chat members, do we want to do a little practice or are we just kind of, is our brain full right now? I never know how to handle it. So brain full or ready to go? Muhammad's brain is full. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, I would encourage you to practice on your own. Find something. Try to cite it in, in um, Chicago. When you're looking for, um, when you're using those citation things, look at how they cite Chicago and see if they're right or see if they're wrong. Okay. Thank you for joining me, everyone. Thank you, Mohammed, Thank for you. keeping me on the straight and narrow. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll wait. I'm like Mohammed, and you should know I can be quiet. I can. Um, and there also will be, if Mohammed hasn't put it up, there's a survey. Please feel, feel free to fill it out and be honest with us and be honest with me. Um, Mohammed catalogs all of them and if there's any bad news he breaks it to me gently and if i how can i improve if i don't know what i can improve on um how can i do better so please feel free to uh, fill that out and i know we usually have a regular is stephanie in yeah. hey stephanie <laughs> good to see you okay everybody see you next week and everyone have a good day